Hello everyone, welcome to another Patreon vlog. My name is Fear Dragon, and this today is August 3rd slash 4th, depending on when this actually uh, gets to you guys and gets uploaded to YouTube, but yeah, this is yet another Patreon vlog uh, for the first week of August. So, quick updates for those who are not familiar with the Patreon vlogs that I do. Uh, these are vlogs that Patreon goal and we meet the goal so I do these vlogs every single week and kind of give you guys updates on where the Patreon money is going, what's up with me, and then I talk about a topic of my choice for 10 to 15-ish minutes. So let's go ahead and get started. So first of all, let's talk a little bit about NA Ladder Heroes. So NA Ladder Heroes uh, is where all the money for Patreon is going, so that's just kind of like the focus for the first part of these Patreon vlogs. So you can see over here, this is the amazing, amazing Liquipedia page and article that uh, was made by some fantastic people who basically do all the Liquipedia updates. So big shout out goes to them. And uh, this is the one that's specifically for like the entire event. Uh, you can go ahead and click on up over here, July or August. So let's go to July and do a little recap on the monthly finals that just happened. So Monthly finals went really, really well, I think. We ended up having Jon Snow from Flipside Tactics taking first place, Drunken Boy taking uh, second place, and also off-racing ones as Protoss in the finals versus Jon Snow. Didn't go so well. He did it on, like, a very... He did it on Iron Fortress, which is, for those who don't know, a map that I think is generally considered a little bit Zerg-favored, and he decided to go Protoss on it, and I was like, Why? Why? That, like, I don't think that's a terrible map for Terran versus... Oh my god, okay. That was a little bit of an aside, but, you know, big shout out to goes to uh, Drunken Boy for doing something like that anyways. And, of course, Game Time uh, taking third place, and he was the fill-in, actually, as uh, State was unable to participate, had to cancel a little bit last second, and uh, we also had Ender, who was had to cancel a little bit last second, so... Game time was filling in for State. Ender uh, had to can He wasn't quite able to give me the uh, heads up on his cancellation in time, so wasn't able to find a fill-in for him. But that kind of leaves a... Well, you can take a look at the bracket over here. You can see there was a no Protoss, so Drunken Boy's off racing as Protoss in the finals was very much appreciated. But uh, a very, very awesome first monthly finals. I think that we ended up having around average, I would say, 200-ish viewers. Uh, I'm not like pulling this off of like a statistics page is just from what I observed and I think we hit around like 300 350 or so viewers as like a max concurrent kind of thing that's the highest that I saw anyway so I was pretty happy with how things went considering this is the first time this is during a bunch of other popular streams involving you know some random other Starcraft drama that I don't really care about um so I was pretty happy with the numbers but anyways let's really quickly do a, a little bit of a talk on August though since August, we can go ahead and move over here and see. Aha! We have our standings for August. We have Jon Snow coming in first place, Peely Peely coming in second place, and the rest you can kind of see over here. And uh, I'm always a little bit happy to see Pig and Ender and also Arthur. Uh, just like all of these kind of non-North American names also getting involved. It really, really does make me a little bit happy because it means these are players that may not have, other, would otherwise not maybe not have been playing on the North American ladder and are, I hope, for this event uh, or at least have this event in mind when they're playing. So big shout outs go to them and uh, congratulations goes to John Stone and Peely Peely for taking first and second in the uh, first week of August as we're already kicking things off and getting ready for those monthly finals for August now. Uh, there's going to be four weeks available for NA Ladder Heroes in August, as opposed to July, where there was only three. We started a week late because the GM Ladder List came out a week late into July, but should be pretty exciting to uh, get everything started in August. But that is it for NA Ladder Heroes. Um, I guess one other quick update is for the people who are doing all the Patreon stuff, if you are supporting me on Patreon, just double check. It's totally fine if like you know this happens like i don't I don't feel bad about it or anything but there have been a couple of uh people who pledged a certain amount and it says that their cards declined or something like maybe your credit card information was entered wrong or something like that if you do still want to pledge then go ahead and take a look at that if you for some reason like don't have the funds then don't even worry about it you can always pledge another time or heck you can go ahead and uh, keep the money and go buy some food food is good don't don't skip out on food to pledge for any ladder heroes. Not a worthwhile thing to do. Uh, food is more important. But if you do have the funds, 
heavily, heavily appreciate it. But uh, that is it for any Ladder Heroes in terms of what is going to be up with me. So for the most part, it's just going to be ESL and a open this coming weekend. Uh, I don't have anything super duper big planned in terms of casting. Uh, I'll probably try and do some more chill streams. I've been laddering a lot off of stream and it's been feeling pretty good. I, I think like I was, I was laddering a lot and I would lose a lot of games where I would feel like I had to entertain the stream and constantly spurred out my like train of thought so it wasn't going to be a boring stream and I think that that really did uh, cause a lot of problems for me and I was sitting in plat for a while because of that but you know as soon as I stopped streaming I was like okay you know whatever like start playing a little bit oh hey I'm back in diamond like this is awesome so first time back in diamond for a uh, like, couple seasons now so it feels pretty good and I might start streaming again now I kind of I'm sort of on the edge about it but uh, I might even just start doing some more chill streams just to like cast replay so if you have any games that you do want casted replays that you want casted please feel free to send them in over to feardragon64 at gmail.com but with that being said let's move on oh my god i actually forgot to turn on my production lights hold that thought man see look at how much cleaner my background looks like you can't see the the little ripples of my green screen anything anymore so i apologize for that you guys don't have to rewind if that if you didn't even notice it hopefully you guys didn't notice it. if you did notice it i'm so sorry you had to bear with that for five to however many minutes we've been recording this but uh anyways let's talk a little bit about the next thing i want to talk about which is kind of like the topic for the day so if you're all you were interested in is patreon stuff then you know pretty much done there you can go ahead and turn off the video but if you do want to hear me talk about uh something it's regarding legacy of the void and there's been some suggestions uh by david kim in one of the balance uh not vlogs balance blogs uh that he's been releasing talking about the potential removal of certain macro mechanics like larva inject or an adjustments being made to chrono boost and mules and there's been a very mixed bit of feedback a lot of players are kind of saying like why would you remove macro mechanics why are we appealing to the casual people and removing the skill cap and all this other stuff and you know if you i think like to quote a couple of people if you don't enjoy larva injects then why are you playing zerg like all these kind of very very knee-jerk reaction is kind of the way that i feel a lot of it is because uh, we haven't even seen how it would be implemented it's and I don't mean this as an offensive thing to say Blizzard or anything, but it's a half-baked idea. Um, not in the sense that they haven't thought about it, and like a lot. In the sense that it's it's only half of the idea. Like, for example, the Warpgate suggestions that David Kim mentioned in one of his previous uh, blogs was a half idea. He had come up with some ideas for changes that he might want to make to Warpgate, but they were very, very clearly going to be very big nerfs to the Warpgate that uh, Protoss is relying on. Protoss is already very widely considered right now the weakest race in Legacy of the Void. So you have to keep this in mind. Like, Blizzard is aware of this, and I think that we're... If, if you assume that, like, they aren't accounting for the fact that they also would need to counterbalance us with some buffs, then you're not giving them enough credit. I think they're very much aware of that, but they want to kind of iron out the idea of what system would make sense from a design perspective. And then balance changes to buff Protoss in other ways can come at another time. Either in a different balance patch or hopefully, more hopefully, in after they've at least ironed out the idea and what that they are settling on from a design perspective. And I think that makes a lot more sense. And I think a similar thing is happening over here. They talk about things like, we're going to potentially remove larva injects. Well... There is this idea that larva, like larva injects, and a couple like macro mechanics. There are some macro mechanics that aren't super interesting, right? It's a it's a binary thing of like you're doing it well, you're not. There's not as much decision making in it, and I think that that's not necessarily a bad thing. But the concept that I'm trying to drive at is there's this idea of artificial difficulty in games. Now, what I mean by artificial difficulty is for example, take Brood War, right? Uh, in Brood War, when you made a worker, it wasn't enough that the worker was made. You also had to go tell it to mine once it popped. Once it popped out of production. 
So that was that extra APM step. Now, in a sense, there was a lot of skill involved because it required more APM to do. There was that additional action that you had to do to actually get the use uh, out of your workers. But I would consider that artificial difficulty because it's not a very interesting thing, right? Uh, aside from the fact that APM is a resource in StarCraft, I think that there are already enough things going on in Legacy of the Void that APM is already taxed. It's already a resource that you, I don't think most players uh, have like an infinite amount of, right? Like I think very, very few players, if any, in Legacy of the Void are saying, I actually don't have anything I can do with this extra APM. Like I'm never being a challenged with my APM. Like I think that's just not happening. And I don't think it's going to happen anytime soon, especially with all the kind of changes they've been making with spells and units and that kind of stuff. But, you know, I think that the Larva Inject can sort in a similar way, like is very similar to the, I'm going to rally my, or like after my unit, my, after my probe or SCV or drone or whatever pops, I'm going to go send it to mine minerals. Like it's that dull action that's kind of uninteresting. It's the artificial difficulty. We want difficulty. We want things that are difficult in StarCraft that like we can do, but we don't want artificial difficulty. Artificial difficulty is, I think, boring. And I think that it turns off a lot of newer players. And sure, it is a way, it is an additional way that advanced players can separate themselves from the lower uh, players, which is a good thing because you want to be able to create that sort of gap of skill. Uh, the, the better you're at at the game, the higher consistency you should have over players of a lesser skill level. I think that's very important. But I think that there are better ways to do it than something like Larvinjex. Larvinjex is a very, it's a, it's not necessarily a bad mechanic, and I, I kind of like the idea of the auto inject. Uh, maybe like they they've talked about, you know, maybe some adjustments where it's like, oh, you'll inject less larva than we do right now. But um, there, it also opens up like some interesting uh, avenues for, I guess, development with creep or sorry, not creep side. Uh, well, kind of creep side with energy for queens, right? So we have transfuse and we have creep tumors. And right now, it's pretty much just like you almost, like besides maybe like a 45 to one minute period, I think in like for Zerg players in almost all the matchups, it's pretty much just like, I'm gonna inject constantly and then I'm gonna make a separate queen for creeps and everything. So imagine if now you suddenly have an incentive to get creep sword started much earlier you have this extra additional energy that you can now use and start spreading creep much earlier now. That's that extra mechanic that is more, it requires more thought. What direction are you going to spread creep out at? Uh, that kind of thing. Like maybe you will even want to just save some energy for transfuses. Now you're saying, okay, do I want to save energy for transfuse or do I want to just start spreading creep? Now it's a more interesting decision going on. And that's kind of something that I like about say Chronoboost. Chronoboost is a really, really, uh, decision making based thing sure you, you there is like some skill in keeping your chrono boost low and i say that and i know that a lot of players will be like oh my god how hard is it to keep your chrono boost low honestly just take a look at like literally some of the best players in the world at like the 15 to 20 minute mark and you'll notice a lot of their chrono boost is really really high it's actually a little bit funny um but you know there are the players that do keep their chrono boost low um regardless my point being that uh, there's an intelligent decision making and strategy involved in where you spend your chrono boost or you know with terrans like throwing down mules versus scanning and even where you're scanning all the there's like decisions being made in that with larva injects it's not as much so i am actually kind of in i'm a little bit in favor of this decision i don't know but we don't know that's the thing right we don't know what the implementation is going to be and all i want people to do is keep an open mind to it because there's no sense in having a knee-jerk reaction to something we don't even know the full details for. It's like if I said right now in, I don't know, like in, in Heart of the Swarm, right? Like, let's forget like If I said in Heart of the Swarm, hey, we're going to make a balanced patch change to Terran. And everyone just starts freaking out and having knee-jerk reaction. Oh my god, Terran is already doing really, really well by like the 8 minute mark or whatever versus these racers or something. Like, they don't need this, blah, blah, blah. Like, 
we don't even know what the change is. For all we know, they could say, like, oh, we're going to buff, like, Battlecruiser, I don't even know, like, hit points by five. Like, it could be something insignificant. It could be a trade-off where they buff one thing and nerf another, and it bounces out and makes the game a little bit more interesting and fun. Like, we don't really know the full details. So all I'm asking is... This, I'm not saying, like, this is the change that needs to be made. I'm saying, give it a shot. We can theory craft about it. That's fine. But don't jump to conclusions until we start to see where, it's actually, like, where it actually takes effect, what the changes are actually going to be, and when we actually try it out and see what the impact is. Because it's very easy to theory craft. Uh, this is something that uh, I, when I spent a lot of time in the Smash Brothers community, this is something that would happen a lot. People on the forums would constantly, there was like this very, very large group of people who would theory craft everything. And they wouldn't play the game as much. They would just theory craft a lot of different things. And uh, I was uh, unfortunately going to admit I was a part of that kind of group for a very long time. And one thing that I realized is there's only so much value in theory crafting. Because you would theory craft and theory craft and you say like, oh my god, well actually like there's, in theory like... A Marth player should never ever let like a Captain Falcon ever get within like five whatever like m small little like pixels or something of Marth because you know he has this range on him with a sword. He's you know, like all this kind of like crazy crazy thing and like oh my god you know there's one frame advantage like theoretically you should never ever ever get hit in this matchup like and you'd realize that there was so much more going into the game and there were a lot of things that you didn't really get unless you were just playing it. There's so many things that StarCraft is such a complicated game. Smash Brothers is a complicated game, but StarCraft is also a very, very complicated game. And there's so many things that you just can't really directly account for when you only theory craft. You need to get some experience in and see how things actually play out because you'll surprise yourself with how a lot of things actually happen. So that's kind of my message. Try not to have knee-jerk reactions to incomplete ideas. And that's the biggest thing I'm going to uh, leave off with is the balance vlog, b balance blogs from, this is a vlog, David Kim does not do vlogs, he does blogs. Uh, the balance blogs from David Kim, to me, and I think it's very important that people interpret it this way, are not fully, like, fully thought out ideas. They are thoughts that David Kim is having and is exploring more into and putting more thought into. I don't think it, I think it's very important that we don't take it as this is what David Kim is going to do in the next balance patch. I don't think that's the right way to look at it. I think it's something that we should look into. We read, you know, whatever his thoughts are. We give our on like feedback on like what we think about the idea. He kind of gets to think about it a li little bit more and then makes a judgment call of whether or not he wants to make adjustments to the idea or if he wants to try it out maybe a little more internally before trying it out in a more public setting or if he wants says like okay I'm actually pretty happy with this let's try this out on the beta servers like I think that is the way we should look at it not as David Kim says he's going to remove larva injects what are we gonna do well let's all quit Starcraft because this is not gonna be funny We're like I've quite literally seen people say they are going to quit playing Zerg. They're going to quit StarCraft when, like, they don't actually, no, the worst part is they don't even say when they remove Larva Index. They just say, wow, you know, I think I'm going to quit StarCraft because they're removing Larva Index, guys. Like, it's it's already gone. Like, I know that it's not gone yet, but, I mean, it's it's gone, guys. Rest in peace, Larva Index. Like, it, this is really, really de defeatist mentality on this. Like, hey, you know, I don't think Blizzard's, like, that dumb if... No, if it turns out to be a terrible, terrible idea, they are listening and they will reconsider it, right? Like, this is all about the the purpose of testing. So, anyways, I've ranted for long enough on this. Uh, keep an open mind. Try not to knee-jerk react too much. And uh, keep StarCrafting, guys. And, of course, big shout-out goes to all the people who are supporting me on Patreon. If you guys do want to support me on Patreon, it's over at patreon.com slash feardragon64. All the money going toward events and other esportsy stuff that I do. But the people who are supporting me are Technotrance, KJ Freedom, Bobble Convolute, Zizla, Zealous Sam, Galeoprone, ESL, Mr. Torrential, Halikin, OFFU, and uh, SYZ Adrenaline, and Joe from Esports Heaven. Thank you guys very much. You're... Uh, Support is very much appreciated, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Happy StarCrafting, and keep...
keep starcrafting.